Hello, this is Carol Smith, meteorologist with the National Weather Service Los Angeles Oxnard. This is an educational weather briefing on Santa Ana winds. We will take a look at what factors combine to create these winds and examine a recent Santa Ana event. Santa Ana winds are warm, dry, offshore winds that affect southwestern California when the conditions are right. Offshore means that the winds blow from the northeast to southwest across the area. Santa Ana winds peak in the fall and winter months, although they have been known to occur in the spring and summer months as well. The Springs Fire of May 11, 2013 is a classic case of a strong Santa Ana that occurred outside of what we consider to be the typical months. Santa Anas are most commonly associated with warm or even hot temperatures, although some winter events can be cold if the air mass inland is cold. Very dry air and low relative humidity are also very typical of Santa Anas. Finally, these events very often follow storm systems that cross the region, in particular if the storms move from northwest to southeast over the area. As the storm moves inland, high pressure will follow and build into the Great Basin. For example, we often see strong surface highs over Utah and Nevada during these events. And with lower pressure along the Southern California coast, offshore gradients develop and northeasterly winds result. This image shows winds and wind speed at 30 meters above ground level, approximately 98 feet above ground level, from the NAM-12 model. This is a field that we often use to judge the strength of future Santa Anas when we're sitting at the forecast desk. And when we're diagnosing just how strong the winds will be, there are three key factors we like to look at. First, we look for strong surface pressure gradients. This means that we have strong high pressure to the northeast of us and lower pressure along the coast. We also need upper level wind support to get the really strong winds, and when I say strong, I mean that the winds are gusting to 60 miles per hour or higher across the area. Good wind support also means that we have northeast wind alignment with strong winds from the northeast all the way from the surface up to around the 10,000 foot level. And finally, we need good thermal support. When there's cold air over the desert, for example, with a very cold low pressure system moving east of the area. This helps to accelerate the offshore winds. Speaking of low pressure systems moving east of us, Santa Ana winds typically follow when a storm system moves from the northwest to southeast across California. A good example of this occurred recently. On Monday, February 9th, a storm system moved toward northern California from the northwest. This storm delivered plenty of rain to the northern part of the state, but was not particularly cold. However, as the storm moved inland late Tuesday into Wednesday, February 11th, Santa Ana winds picked up over the area. Let's take a closer look at that now. This image was taken from the GFS model, valid at 10 a.m. or 18 Z on Monday, February 9th. The plot shows 500 millibar heights in the green contours. The image is 500 millibar vorticity, and mean sea level pressure is the light blue dotted line. I've also identified surface high and low centers, and the green arrow depicts storm motion. At 10 a.m. on Monday the 9th, an upper trough is moving into the Pacific Northwest with the strong wave, the red colors in the image, moving into Northern California. The trough is forecast to shift southeastward across the area, and meanwhile you can see surface high pressure west of Point Conception with low pressure or lower pressure near Las Vegas, and the result of this was onshore flow across the area on Monday. Now we're looking at a similar image taken from the GFS model, this time on Wednesday, February 11th at 10 a.m. You can see that the upper low is over Arizona and New Mexico now, and meanwhile a strong surface high is over eastern Idaho, extending into northern Utah and Nevada. There is surface low pressure southwest of the Southern California coast. The gradient, or difference, between the surface high and surface low causes wind to blow from the high toward the lower pressure. So this produced northeast winds over our area on Wednesday with gusts of 40 to 50 miles per hour, and there were a few gusts up to 60. You may wonder why this event, while noteworthy, was not as strong as some past events where trees were blown down and power lines blown down. And uh, these pictures are showing 
evidence of past events. While we had fairly strong surface pressure gradients with our current event, we were lacking the thermal support and lacking upper level wind support. And as we discussed earlier, both of these things are important ingredients to give us the stronger Santa Ana winds. So to end, I'll list a couple of additional questions that you may have including why does the weather often turn so warm or even hot during Santa Ana wind events? Well, as the air descends on the west side of the mountains toward the ocean, compressional heating occurs. And this means that the air is compressed as it flows downhill and its temperature rises. And as the temperature rises, this also causes the air to become very dry as the available moisture evaporates. And here's one additional reason why the winds are often so strong during Santa Ana's. As the wind flows through gaps in the terrain, such as passes and canyons, it accelerates. It's constricted as it moves through the terrain with sta a stable air layer aloft, and this helps to increase the wind speeds. So thank you for listening, and be sure to post any questions you have about this presentation or any other weather-related topic on our Facebook page.